Hello and welcome to Living Green with IGBC, the platform where we dwell into the fascinating world of sustainable living and green innovations. I am Girish, a green building enthusiast that dwells on creating sustainable built environments that are both healthy and efficient to operate. Today we are honored to have with us a very special guest, Mr. Mahesh Anand, the president of Nippon Paint India Decorative Division, a leader in sustainability space and a pioneer in creating paints that add a lot of sustainability value. Welcome to the show, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, you. for having me for this podcast. Our pleasure, sir. So let us set some context for today's topic. So we are going to be discussing about IAQ, known as indoor air quality, which is making a lot of waves in terms of what is happening at Mumbai, Delhi, the pollution, etc. So the conversation is going to revolve around aspects such as what are the sources of these pollutants, how we can manage this better, what happens in a home context, what happens in an official context uh, that is specifically in the commercial buildings. Uh, so no matter whether you are a homeowner, you are a building occupant or somebody from the building industry or, for an, or an architect, doesn't really matter. Today, this topic is something that covers everybody. You could even be an enthusiast that wants to provide a better living condition for your very family. True, very true, yeah. So yeah. This is, this is a topic that probably encompasses everybody and this awareness needs to be there. Of course, so, yes. In fact, uh, there is, uh, of course, everybody would have seen it like, you know, it has been talked about long time, like indoor pollutants are more than the exterior pollution, what we have. Five to six times indoor is more polluted than the exteriors. The reason is because whatever is the exterior pollution, what we see outside, for example, of the vehicle traffic or the, the construction dust, which is there, Everything comes into indoor and so it adds on to that. That's how you say that indoor is more polluted than the outdoor, right? And indoor already you have so much of pollutants by way of, you know, the cooking gas, the fumes from frying and of course there are some people who smoke inside the homes. Pets also bring in a lot of pollutants into it and, and, and there are so many materials, building materials, furnitures, which will keep on emitting, you know, pollutants. And carpets emit pollutants, of course, paints also will emit pollutants, right? And so, so this adds up to that to make it more concentrated. So, indoor is more polluted than the outdoor. That's a very interesting perspective because we are talking about a set of trap pollutants here, at least in the outdoor, if there is a rain, if there is a wind movement, exactly. it gets suppressed, it gets controlled. But once it comes inside, it stays there forever. Completely trapped. Until we take the effort to evacuate them and to make that space better. Exactly. That's so, true. Yeah. So I think we'll dwell a little more into each of these finer aspects as to what the sol uh, you know sources of these pollutants are, how we could control them, how we could monitor them. Are of course, it, it it will it will be a, 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 a sort of a learning for everybody, you know, a eye opener for everybody uh, to to understand what all contributes to these pollutants and how do we overcome them, how do we overcome these challenges? Yep. So especially after COVID, we are seeing that we are spending a lot of time indoors and we have already been branded as the indoor generation, where we spend 90 to 95 percent of our times in some built environment or the other. How is this impacting health, IAQ? Uh, see, uh, I think COVID has brought in a new normal amongst everybody, especially the parents, you know, and uh, they're more worried about too many things, right? And not allowing children to play outside is something uh, 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 basically it should not happen in the sense. You know, in our days, you know, we used to play outside always. We never come home. You know, only for food we used to come home. But that just led to something which is making the people to sit inside. And because of that, new ailments like vitamin D deficiency has come up. And the Gen Z and, and of course the new gens also is having this problem. And, uh, you know, the basic uh, vitamin D source is sunlight. And sunlight gives us that source and, and today's generation is deprived of it and we are depending on some medications and things like that. And this also plays a vital role in the indoor air quality, uh, defects what we face uh, uh, within our uh, uh, children or within our body. So apart from extended exposure to a lot of oxygen that's available outside, we are also depriving ourselves of sunlight. Uh, and, and hence the vitamin D deficiency. You know? that, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So it all adds up at the end of the day. It's interesting. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. right. Yeah. So moving a little further from setting the context, if something is adding or making the air quality poor, what are these sources? Where do they come from? How are they affecting us? And what should we be taking care of? Uh, I, there are a lot many things which pollute the air. You know, in fact, when the civilization uh, uh, improved, you know, 
earlier civilization probably had the best air quality but current civilization which we are you know going towards developments you have more vehicles on the road you have construction activities happening vehicles emit you know carbons and construction activity pollutes the air and of course the pollens also from the plants which will be adding on to the pollutants for the exteriors when it comes to interiors you have like your cooking gas your your furniture your limits emit uh, formaldehyde and your carpets emit and your adhesives emit this actually as as common as a newspaper you know the ink which is used in the newspaper also will emit uh, you know pollutants and your your cleaning liquids what we use in the kitchen and bathrooms also emit lot of uh, you know uh, so maybe even the floor cleaners that we use on a daily of course, basis yes of course yes and and that is something which people are not aware of it and we will start using it and it's a common practice today and and i think uh, the the awareness towards that is very very important and 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 you are on apt time to come out with this type of a podcast right very interesting so what are the health effects that can be attributed to these pollutants that are there in the air very simple i mean you just don't bother much about it but if your eye gets irritated that is because of the pollutant you get nauseating feeling that's because of the pollutants right and and probably you there is a there is a sick building syndrome right. probably you get fatty towards the end of the day it is because of sick building syndrome so it's probably not because of the work stress that i've had it's probably maybe that because... add to it actually <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah work pressure adds on to that probably you might not feel so tense if you are not into this sb a sick building syndrome what we have i mean that is something that i've read very recently like at the end of the day when you're feeling really tired it is probably your brain asking you to take a break because there's a lot of carbon dioxide in the system is that also a point that because we breathe out carbon dioxide does that also make it detrimental to the indoor air quality very true very true but probably what happens is like you know when you feel tired you go for a smoke but that's adds on to your pollutants you know adds on to your sick building syndrome whereas the best thing to do would be you know Just go for a outside walk outside walk or rather yeah. you know have a dedicated zone with plants inside your facility yeah, and, and recently i read somewhere you know sitting is a new smoking yeah yeah and so so you just have to walk just take a break every two hours you go for a walk and come back connect with mother nature get a yeah. dash of fresh air and come back into the absolutely. office absolutely no oh, that's a nice perspective let me ask you this question girish i mean you are into green consulting and you are into hvac systems and certifying uh, helping people to certify green buildings we talked about it like you know a lot of people most of the people they are in indoors and indoors with air conditioning facilities with their home and today earlier days is only the bedroom had an air condition today everywhere you have an air condition probably in bathrooms also but uh, is that is that is that helping us for keeping an uh, indoor air quality good or is that is that not good for uh, for for the for the people who are living inside I think a very interesting question i'll probably take this in two parts right so as far as the commercial facilities that is these it offices our offices are concerned yes. there is a very good probability that these acs are enhancing the indoor air quality using a combination of technologies one is they've got all the right filters in place these filters come with annual maintenance contracts which means they are cleaned on a regular basis, regular basis. the ducting That's is right. cleaned on a regular basis there is also a fresh air inlet a percentage of fresh air is always mixed with the return air so people are uh in some terms or the other they are they are sitting in a healthy environment at least comparatively true now the problem comes when we come to our home segment home seg now home segment we do not have the concept of a centralized ac we generally use these split air split conditions air condition where the air is trapped inside yes and the same air is recirculated Sorry. again now these filters do play a role in cleaning up the air right capturing all the particulate matter that is there in the air and giving us clean air but this is not necessarily oxygenated okay so it is a carbon dioxide rich air that is clean the second part to this is you could also have a perception wherein the throw is reduced so you know that it's a time it's a good time to clean to the clean filter it up. yes so so there are i'll address this in two parts so one part is it cleans up the air which is good the filters take care but there's another part wherein these homes need to be supplied with fresh air which is not that today understand which means that uh, can i say that uh, good iaq a good indoor air quality means the people inside are healthy well not necessarily oh. now iaq cannot be taken a look at as a separate parameter okay. it has to be combined with the details of what is the carbon dioxide content in the air so one part is the air is pure now we also need to find out if it is oxygenated when these two 
happen in a combination when these two are delivered in such a way that the air is pure and the oxygen levels are maintained that translates into oh, a healthy okay. indoor space understand so i i still remember one uh, talk uh, which is in youtube by mr dr kamal mittal uh, he is the founding member and uh, managing director of uh, baharpur industries right. delhi and today they say his office is the most purest or most oxygenated office because he has about 50000 plants inside and in that talk he talks about how an indoor plant can bring in more oxygen into your home right i mean he talks about few plants like arika palm and uh, uh, the mother in law stung and mani plant mani plant for example yeah. and these plants i believe some of the plants he said that that used to breathe plant breathing is plant take inside of carbon dioxide emit oxygen. oxygen we do the other way we breathe out carbon dioxide we breathe out carbon dioxide we we need more oxygen seems so like a symbiotic relationship exactly. over here and uh, so he says that these plants keep it in your bedroom and uh, you will have a good sleep and he he talks about this also in the, the sense like um, if you breathe more oxygen inside what you breathe it will improve the cognitive ability of people and it has been proven there is a research paper in harvard which was released which says that if your air you breathe has more of more oxygen especially for kids and and elderly people and sick people the cognitive ability improves Very interesting. and that's, that's and these plants if i'm not wrong also have the ability to absorb and digest certain vocs volatile organic compounds as well which is essentially the next topic that we are going to talk about so volatile organic compounds what are these sir yeah vocs today uh, of course people may not know the exact uh, voc what it is but i can connect it with the common things which is there in your normal household like for example you keep a mosquito repellent right and a liquid on heating evaporates i mean that's a volatile organic compound and if you apply uh, uh, adhesive you know adhesive cures by evaporation of solvents that's a volatile organic compound you go to a freshly made plywood you smell that you know that is a formaldehyde actually and and very very harmful and even in paints paints emit gases uh, even formaldehyde and which is volatile organic compound very interesting i mean that brings me to my next question there is this concept of flush out which is given so much importance from a green building exactly, perspective exactly so before a building is occupied we are asked to operate the either the mechanical devices for a period of 5 days so they you know release all the vocs and flush it out essentially yeah. or keep the doors and windows open for 10 days yes. so what why 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 is that so basically these substances has to cure like if you apply paint paint has to cure how does the paint cure is by evaporation of solvents so it releases these formaldehyde it releases the solvents and, VOCs and, and so that is why immediately after painting you keep the doors and windows open right and that's called the flush out syndrome or flush out methodology which has been adopted not only for paints for furniture for carpets you know everything you need this flush out actually right. only then the occupants can go inside so in some way it is exposing it to a little bit of a higher temperature so it can release all these and make it safer for the occupants true, too true true yes very true very interesting yeah. So that brings me to my next question. The moment I enter a freshly painted home, I I I do feel that that smell is a little nauseating. Uh, I do have irritation that I'm, my my eyes start watering. So what is Nippon doing as you know specifically to the green building segment? What is your contribution in mitigating the impacts of these harmful VOCs? Right. So uh, as I said in the earlier uh, topic, you know, uh, paints, decorative paints, set or cure by evaporation of solvents, right? and whatever the solvents inside the paint has to evaporate and that is what you are breathing and your eye irritation is also all about so nippon being an innovative company and then we started working closely with our uh, vendors raw material vendors and then uh, we came out with paint which does not smell which does not emit anything so that was called as odorless emulsion long back in 2010 but now we have paints which are anti formaldehyde and formaldehyde abatement paints right and uh, that's that's where we have contributed towards this indoor air quality so the paints which are applied on the wall keeps your indoor air as oxygenated as possible wow interesting yeah. so one part that i understand is these are low voc or zero voc paints range that you already ultra have. low voc paints ultra low voc yeah. paints so and, uh, uh, to be part of the igbc indian green building council these these products have been certified as green pro eco labeled wonderful that was my next question because there are so many 
you know, products in the market, not just paints. And there's a very clear contention of green versus green washing. Exactly. Today. What is actually green and what is claimed to be green, but not necessarily contributing to the sustainable environment. Yeah, green washing is something which everybody will talk about it. But, but who is going to authorize it? Who is going to authenticate it? A certifying body like IGBC is credited enough because they have uh, counselors who work on this globally and they get knowledge and they certify a product to be green, a building product to be green. And we were the first paint company to be certified as Green Pro and, and that's a certification given by IGBC and it has been recognized by the global uh, network, uh, eco-label network. Wonderful. So, it is not just like certifying it, it is like completely going to the life cycle of the process. Ah, very interesting. Process. So, does that also mean that you have an account of what energy it takes to manufacture exactly. this? How much water has been spent? What is the carbon very emission? True. Very true. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, just to simply putting it across to the common man, a Green Pro certified product has undergone almost like 25 to 30 percent less carbon footprint than a non-Green Pro certified product. Just to break it down for the audience, can I say today when we book a flight, we are able to see what is the emission associated with that Very flight. True. Is Very it true. comparable to that wherein I have an option to take a look at this and make a, you know, sustainable choice per se? Yes, absolutely. Because this comes in the scope 3 of your, you know, carbon emission uh, norms which has been there. So, when you use paints which are green post certified, these paints are, uh, which has contributed almost 20 percent less carbon footprint than a non-certified, uh, non-green post certified product. Wonderful. So, that actually makes the consumer's job so easy. He doesn't have to do all the research. Somebody is actually putting the product through a green evaluation process that is kind of intense yeah. because it takes into consideration a lot of these aspects and then gives you a label that proves that, you know, it is not just clean green, it actually performs or adds value to the sustainability. Absolutely. So, uh, to conclude, it is during the manufacturing process, it has emitted less carbon footprint and after application also, it does not emit any solvents. It rather contributes to the uh, exactly. indoor air quality so, and the health of the occupant of that particular Very devices. true, very true. Yes. So, I basically come from this fraternity of green building engineering, green building consultancy, simulation and all that. So, this is something that I do day in and day out, taking a look at products that come into the market. But paint being such a niche, such a specific sector, what were your motivational factors to, you know, add sustainability value to a, such a niche segment like a, let us say, a decorative division? Well, uh, I think I need to bring it from the vision of Nippon Paint, the global organization. And uh, the, 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 of course, we are into the paint and coatings industry. Uh, we have to sell paints to, and we have to sell coatings to people, more paints and more coatings to people. But the purpose for what Nippon exists is basically to uh, be with the living uh, nature and uh, through science and technology and science and innovation, science and imagination. So, we feel that that's a responsibility we have that to bring in products which are more sustainable and for uh, for for the entire globe, for the entire living beings, right? So, uh, when we wanted to come into India, when we did the research actually way back in 2004-2005, we, we saw that India had a handful of companies which have been serving to the needs of the customers, but everybody were talking about color, uh, texture, finish and everything, protection of course, and nobody was very specifically talking about green. Right. Nobody was specifically talking about uh, human friendly, environmentally friendly products, which was actually at that point of time already getting into the international uh, market. So, we thought that we will be the right people to come and set up the benchmarking here. And that's when we thought that green uh, makes business sense for us. Wow. So, we, we joined the green bandwagon. And that's when IGBC also was started and gaining momentum under the leadership of Prem C. Jain. So, we joined them as a founding member and then it continued. It's continuing so far. I think this completes the context for me. The definition of a green building is conservation of resources like energy, water, material, etc. But there is a caveat to this that says without compromising on the human health and the comfort factor. I right. think so this closes the loop essentially for very me. Very true, very true. In fact, uh, when we started interacting with IGBC uh, professionals or the, uh, the counselors of and the green consultants, basically they said that yes, paints have to be green. At the same time, it has to perform its properties, you know, color and protection. These are the basic properties and of course, longevity of the paint. 
So we have formulated paints which are green pro, which will serve you the purpose, the basic purpose of a paint, but at the same time are sustainable. Very uh, interesting. So you are yeah. you're covering functionality, sustainability and you are not falling okay. short of spreading the awareness as well. Now very, these are yes. certain very technical terms that people, I mean in the green building industry know, but a common man does not have this awareness. I think you are doing your part in spreading that as well. Very true. It's 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 it's, it's basically we feel that it's part of our, uh, our commitment to the society, commitment to the, the planet Earth. Uh, that's what we feel it as. Nothing can substitute what a tree does, of a course, large tree does. Yes. The amount of carbon that it sequesters, the filtration uh, abilities of the trees, the you know the absorption capability of the trees. So that is we could have so many. Uh, you know, active technologies, but something that is a living nature. tree. Yeah, nature. Living nature. Nature yeah. as a purifying medium cannot be substituted by no matter how much technology comes through. I, in, this this actually comes to me or brings back to my one of the media, uh, which I saw a video by an environmentalist. It says that in a lifespan, in a man's lifespan, a human's lifespan, if he plants 14 trees, he will become carbon neutral because wow. the amount of carbon dioxide we emit, the amount of oxidation which happens after the food and other things. So if we if we can plant 14 trees in a lifespan, I think we are carbon neutral and everybody does it. I think that's what we can do it for the planet and for the net zero and the way forward for the future generation. As a part of the recent Harit Prem Bharat Mahotsav commemorating our, uh, you know, one of the pioneers in the Indian green building field, right, Dr. Right, late right. Dr. Prem yeah. C. Jain. I had seen that you had done a recent plantation drive, if I'm not wrong, about 1000. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Actually, uh, yeah, this was the sixth uh, Harit Prem Bharat Mahotsav 2024, which we celebrate for a week uh, in commemoration of uh, Prem C. Jain. Dr. Prem C. Jain was being the pioneer in the IGBC. Uh, uh, the Green Building Green Movement Building in movement India. Itself, and we are all been inspired by him. So, uh, Nippon Paint India Decorative Paints are about a thousand employees of on-road employees. So, we said like, on that 29th of January, we said we will plant 1000 trees in our factory so that at least uh, we go by what we heard by the environmentalists that in a lifespan, if, 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 a, if a human being plants uh, 14 trees, he becomes carbon neutral. Yeah, so what made me to think about all these things is when I, when I get more informative or when I get more knowledge about this, uh, the, the, the effect of climate change into the planet, you know. Uh, we are in a country in India where India is poised India. for a growth and wherein growth means more buildings, more infrastructure, which which automatically puts a you know, pressure on, the, uh, on, on everybody to adhere to the green building norms. In fact, a very interesting stat that I saw was India is going to become, you know, double its existing building stock lot in the yeah. next 10 years. Yeah. And 80% of the buildings that exist today will continue to exist in 2050. So that's a huge chunk. That's a huge chunk. And then it's, it's not related to any organizations or any company we are working or any movement like green building. It's the it's a personal choice today. We don't have another alternate planet to live in. So it's, it's now. It's not like when I will become like that, when I will be, become more socially or environmentally conscious. Yeah, so it, it has to happen now. So from what I understand, green building is going to be an integral part of, course, of India's course, growth yes, journey. Yes, yes, yes. Wherein we are going to be focusing on resource conservation, material conservation, energy, water conservation, and all this without compromising on people's, you know, thermal comfort, health, well-being, etc. So thanks a lot, sir, for being a part of this, you know, for kickstarting this pleasure, journey. It's a pleasure pleasure for me yeah. and just to just to keep you posted we are we are we have lined up a series of other topics including urban right. heat and effect net zero energy waterways buildings carbon neutrality so on and so forth so thank you so much for being here and sharing all your insights it's a and pleasure is mine and thank you so much again for being having me on this podcast and stay tuned for more content for living green with ajbc